G'day guys, Jason here. Welcome back to my fish room. So I'm back from my cruise and I didn't catch coronavirus. Great success! So uh, really happy about that obviously and um, just can't believe though the chaos that is um, in Sydney at the moment surrounding uh, toilet paper. Um, you know, you go on a holiday, you, you think, oh yeah, we'll just eat all the food before we go away so it doesn't go off while we're away and then uh, come back and lo and behold, you can't buy toilet paper in Sydney anymore. So uh, a bit chaotic, um, I just can't believe it. But anyway, I'm back, the fish are doing really well. Just wanna thank my mum and dad for coming around and looking after them um, every day while I was gone, because while I was gone, a couple fish spawned. So maybe I should go away more often. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'll just go through it now, I'll give you guys a bit of an update on uh, what happened in the fish room while I was, while I was away. So guys, here's the Neolampologus brevis tank. Uh, you, can see, you can see there's a lot of fry in here. I moved some more out last night into the fry grow out tank because they were getting quite large and the male was looking a little bit un uncomfortable with them in being in the tank. So he was kind of bossing them around. Um, he has calmed down a lot though. Um, I originally did think he may be eating some of the babies but there's no way he is. Um, he's, he just moves them away from his shells. Um, and yeah, they're pretty good parents now, these, these two. Um, he's got another female at the back, which he readily spawns with as well, but he mainly spawns with his female here at the front of the tank. Um, so yeah, you can see there's a lot of fry in here. I'm guessing probably about 20 to 30. I'm not exactly sure. It's hard to see them all because they are quite camouflaged on the pool filter sand that I'm using as gravel for the tanks. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're growing pretty quickly. Uh, multiple generations in here always see new fry every few days um, on the sand bed. So the oldest ones in here probably be about a month I suppose. Um, the youngest ones are just free swimming so um, they just keep having babies. Um, yeah, a few, few more every day so it's nice to see. Um, interesting tank to watch, uh, that behaviour of both the parents and the fry interacting together. But yeah, that's the, that's the little quick update on this tank. You see their older brothers and sisters are in this tank here. Um, some of them are starting to transform into the adult shape that brevis have where the uh, under the body is kind of a U shape um, and they've kind of got a flat top uh, so they're really starting to transform into their adult shape which is nice to see as well because these guys are probably about two to three months old and they're growing quite quickly a lot quicker than the Lampelotus oscillatus gold fry that I have so um, it's nice to see I'm excited that I'm going to be able to sell some fish soon. Uh, so the first fish that I, uh, I'll be selling from this fish room will probably be these guys because they've just grown so quickly. Um, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's that's they're the oldest ones, uh, pushing probably it's the biggest ones in here. Are probably pushing three centimeters. All right, on to the next tank. So guys, the next tank that had fry while I was away is uh, the fish in this tank. And these are my Judochromus regani. The pair, that, the dominant pair that are in this tank, um, it's the second time I've noticed that they're spawned. And the most fry I've seen so far from this small pair is three. So uh, the first time I noticed that they'd spawned, I only noticed one fry. Um, however, this time there's three. So. Um, this pair is very small, they're very juvenile still. I'm actually surprised that they are spawning at all for their size. You're talking the female in the center there, uh, she's pushing two, she's about two inches, and the male's about an inch and a half, so they're still quite small, and I believe that they grow to about six inches, so uh, they've got quite a lot of growing to do. Um, and when you're talking three fry per spawn, that really shows how juvenile they are. When they're adults, they can have upwards of 70 fry. So um, they're, they're um, doing pretty well at defending their territory and keeping the other four uh, Reganis in the corner here. Um, I could move the, those four Reganis out of the tank. However, that might mean that the female will start attacking the male. So I'm hesitant to do that. You always want to spread the aggression amongst your cichlids. And, um, yeah, these guys are doing quite well at defending their fry. You know, I've removed those four Reganis out purely so the fry don't get pre uh, preyed on by them, but uh, these parents are learning the ropes and they're doing quite well. So they're defending them. 
Um, I might get some, try and get some close-ups of the fry for you. They are really well camouflaged and hug the substrate and the rocks. But um, yeah, I'll try and get some close-up shots for you now, guys. So guys, this is the next tank that's getting a bit of an update and it's uh, the Albino Bristlenose Catfish Tank. So in here, if you saw part five of my full fish room tour for 2020, you would have seen that I found an egg on one of the Indian almond leaves and that made me believe that the male may have been holding a clutch of eggs. And then I've got some footage of him, in fact, holding a large clutch of eggs and then I had to go away on my holiday and I knew I'd come back to some fry in the tank. And here you can see the fry have hatched and they're all free swimming now, eating everything that they find on the glass and um, in the tank. So I've got some Malaysian driftwood in here. Um, the one is sitting on the zucchini I just placed in the tank, some boiled zucchini. Um, you can see it there. They eat, they eat the biofilm that uh, develops on the Indian almond leaves as well, which is good. I've added in a rock that had some algae on it. Um, they've pretty much cleared that off already. So these guys are also eating the detritus that is has developed on the sponge filters. So they've got a lot of different uh, food sources in here and uh, they're doing really well, so I'm pleased about that. These guys are about uh, a week old now. Um, so this, that's how small they, they look when they first come out of the cave and um, yeah the male's still in the cave and the female is just over here try and increase the exposure so you can see her there she is there and um, I'm hoping they'll spawn again soon so the male will be having a bit of a rest at the moment um, he's done a really good job at um, rearing these fry and um, yeah, I'm really pleased about that, obviously. So yeah, that's, that was a nice uh, thing to come back home to, seeing all the fry come out of the cave and um, be free swimming and healthy. I'm not too sure how many there are. There's probably, oh, Foster has it a guess, maybe about 30, maybe 40 in here. So um, yeah, really pleased. I only, I've only owned this pair for about, not even a month. So maybe, yeah, actually it's probably about a month. So um, yeah, pretty, pretty stoked about that to have fry that quick from this adult pair. All right, on to the next tank. So guys, the last tank in the fish room getting an update today is my white calvus tank, my Alto Lamprologus calvus. Um, if you saw my full fish room tour, part two of that fish room tour, you would know what these guys were like and how I thought they'd be the last fish in the fish room that I'd ever breed. Uh, basically, the female, I've owned, this, I've owned this pair for about five to six months now, and the female would always stay at the back of the tank, she'd never come out, I hardly ever saw her. About a week before I filmed part two of my full fish room tour, I noticed she was swimming around, and she'd be at the front of the tank and um, come out to feed. Um, I usually use, I used to have to open the back lid of the tank and drop some food at the back of the tank to ensure she got some food. However, yeah, about a week before I was, to I was leaving from the cruise, I noticed that she was swimming around the front of the tank. Three days before I left, I noticed I couldn't find her anymore. She wasn't coming out to the front of the tank. I actually thought she was dead somewhere underneath the rocks. I almost uh, got to the point where I was going to pull the back rocks out just to see if she was uh, dead end somewhere. Um, I thought she, she was gone for sure. Then I realised she was in the male shell. She was in the shell that she's facing right now. And I thought, wow, they've spawned. They've never behaved like this before. Uh, the male would flare his gills at me whenever I walked up to the tank. Usually he'd dart straight into the, one of those shells whenever I walked up to the tank. But now he's being really aggressive towards me. And yeah, the female was in the shell. I could see her moving back and forth in there. And I suspected they'd, they had spawned. 
Now with calvus males, generally they eat fry um, and they are known to eat their own fry. So I thought, crap, I'm going, I'm going away for seven days. These guys are going to be around, free swimming around by the time I come back, if they have in fact bred. And I'm going to lose them. I'm going to lose all the fry. So I was considering pulling out that shell on the left there with the female in it and putting it into a, into a tank by herself. And after some conversations with um, some rellos who breed fish, they persuaded me just to leave them, let them be and uh, keep the shell in the tank. So I did that. Thankfully I listened to them because they were right. So left the shell in the tank, come back from the holiday and the female calvus was still in the shell. So that much to my relief, um, the fry hadn't become free swimming yet. And about, what is it now, I came back on Sunday, it's the following Saturday and the fry became, or I noticed the fry free swimming in the shell about two or three days ago. So on about Thursday, uh, I noticed that the fry were free swimming. So last night when I came home from work, on the Friday, I noticed that there was a group of fry in this corner of the tank here. Pulled them out. There was about 10 there. Obviously, the parents have pushed them out. The fry, if I was fearing if the fry would have moved back towards where the parents were, that the male may eat them thinking that there's fry from other, other fish. So I pulled them out into a fry grout tank. This morning I woke up and I pulled out another 65 fry. <laughs> I can't believe it, I really can't believe it. Another 65 fry. They were all, all the fry right at the front of the tank. So I believe that the parents have pushed the fry out. Um, and yeah, I had to get those fry out because you can see this male here, he's changing his color right now. He's not liking me pointing at the tank. The females darted in the shell. They might have more fry, I don't know. They really are camouflaged, but I've pulled out 75 fry um, as we speak um, and that's purely because the males are known to eat the fry usually I like to keep the fry with the parents for as long as possible but I wasn't going to take the risk with these fish so let's have a look at their fry right now so guys I've had to get down really low with the bottom of the tank so you could see the fry because they are very well camouflaged in the parents tank you could hardly see them they're that uh, translucent uh, on the pool filter sand they're really well camouflaged and in here they're really well camouflaged as well this is a bare bottom tank this grow out tank um, it's got some algae cover on the bottom uh, which is great for these guys so they can pick off all the microorganisms that are living in that algae growth um, i've also been feeding these guys uh, live microworms as well as baby brine shrimp and when they when they feed off that they kind of lift off the bottom of the tank they just kind of hop up and uh, grab the food as it drifts past them. But yeah, there's 75 white calvus fry in this tank and I can't believe it. Really, really happy, really stoked. Now all I need to do is breed the black calvus. <laughs> but we'll see how that goes. So there you have it guys, my uh, updated fish room tour for 2020, um, even though I did part five just two weeks ago. Uh, so yeah, really surprised at all the fish that I've spawned in that time um, and how uh, quickly they all spawned within each other. And um, obviously I'm really surprised that the white cow was spawning because I really thought I, if anything I was going to spawn the black cow because they always hang around together. But yeah, anyway guys, there you have it. I'll wrap this one up now. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.